Welcome back guys to Steven's DIY Auto Repair. Do you need a coolant flush? Well, I'm gonna show you how to completely flush your cooling system. And today we're gonna be doing a coolant flush in my 2017 Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat. So let's get started. Warning, coolant is deadly to animals as its sweet smell and taste attracts animals. Please wipe up spilled coolant and seal off coolant containers. Please recycle coolant properly according to your city ordinances. Okay guys, so to do your complete coolant flush, here's the basic tools you're gonna need. You don't necessarily have to have the ones I'm showing you here, but this is what I have today. So I have a light, I have a Milwaukee M18 hex impact driver, uh, you're gonna need a socket set. Uh, today we're gonna be replacing the radiator cap as well as the thermostat. You're gonna need some distilled water. You're gonna need a funnel. You're gonna need some flush and cleaner. You're obviously gonna need your coolant. It helps to you know, have multiple sockets. Also, a pair of safety glasses, always safety first. A pair of channel locks or locking pliers, a ratchet, and the famous Plastic pin pliers, can't, can't do a job without those. As well as a magnetic tray for your bolts, nuts. And gotta stay hydrated, guys. Okay, guys. So, I'm doing a coolant flush only for routine maintenance. And it's not even really routine maintenance because I'm doing it really early. Um, but I'm doing it just to maintain and try to keep the engine running as long as possible. Um, so the service interval, according to the service manual, if you look here, I don't know if you guys can see that. So for a flush and replace for the engine coolant, it's 120 months, if not done at 150,000 miles. I don't know if you guys can see that. So it should be done, it says over here, at 120,000 miles or 120 months. And right now we only have just over 50,000 miles on the car, but we're gonna go ahead and do that, oil, um, sorry, that coolant flush. And then if you look over here for the specifications, I don't know if you guys could, let me stop moving around here. Um, it tells you in your service manual what antifreeze uh, that you're going to need to use. It's the oat coolant and you're going to need 15 quarts or 14.4 liters. Now down here it says intercooler antifreeze 5 quarts. So this is your engine coolant over here. And then if you come over here, your intercooler on your Hellcats, your supercharger is going to be right here. So this is what's gonna take five quarts, this system. But right now we're only focused today on the engine cooler, coolant system, which is right here. So going back to the service manual, um, it calls for OAT coolant, which stands for organic acid technology. And that's the coolant that Mopar goes with, uh, at least for uh, the Hellcat here that we have in front of us. Um, I'm not going to get into all the different types of coolant and the different colors because it can become a mess, especially if you're not too familiar with coolant. Um, but maybe that'll be a, a video for another time if you guys would like to see a, a in-depth video on coolants and, and the colors and um, the OAT organic acid technology or the HOAT hybrid organic acid technology and drop a comment below and let me know and maybe that we can uh go ahead and make you a video on that so now let's get let's get into this all right guys as always safety first we're gonna help i don't know we're gonna come under here show you again we have both sides jacked up safely with two jack stands and a little bit of pressure from the jack as well as if we come over here to the back tires, 
we have both wheels chalked off as well as the emergency parking brake on okay guys so in order to expose your radiator and your drain you're gonna have to take these belly pans off so again these four bolts here are gonna be 10 millimeter There you go now unfortunately you're gonna have to take this other one off I mean you don't necessarily have to I think you could go ahead and access the pe the peacock from here because here's your drain for your radiator but we're gonna go ahead and take this off just to give you guys a better look inside all right guys so we're gonna have to go ahead and take these pins out these annoying pins just take your flat head screwdriver and you just pop them off we're missing one here which is no big deal there you go and you're gonna do the same thing on the other side all right guys, now that we got all those annoying pins off, we're gonna start taking off all these bolts that hold this plastic piece to the front bumper. And it's gonna take a seven millimeter. Alright guys, there we go. Now you can definitely see your radiator. And like I said, here's here's uh here's the overflow. Um and then I don't know if you guys could see too well. But up here. I don't know if you guys could see this right here. Can you? That's called the petcock. And what you're gonna do is once we're ready, we're gonna crack this loose and the coolant's gonna drain out. And that's how you're going to uh, drain out all your coolant. Now, if your car doesn't have a petcock, what you could do is you could come over here. I don't know if you guys could see this gonna come over here okay guys like I was saying if your vehicle doesn't have a pet hawk you would come over find your lower radiator hose which in this case is right here I don't know if you guys can see that this this big hose right here you would take this off from here and that, that would be how you would drain your radiator by the lower radiator hose okay guys so we're gonna go ahead and start draining out the coolant so first, first thing you want to do is come over here, make sure, make sure, make sure your system is cold. Do not try to open this when the system is hot. As I explained in my other video, serious bodily harm can happen if you try to open this up while it's hot. It's cold, the car is completely cold, it hasn't been driven at all. So we're going to go ahead and take this off. Take your old radiator cap off. And that's going to help allow the system to completely drain out faster. So now let's go into the car. Okay, guys. So you want to make sure you have some kind of pan or bucket or something underneath to catch the coolant. So you're going to come over here with some pliers or channel locks, whatever you have, and gently break it loose.
I still can't turn it with my hand, so. You gotta be very gentle with this because it's a plastic piece and it could easily, easily break. Okay guys, we're breaking it loose. As you can see, it's starting to drip. Hard with this cooler light in the way. Okay guys, we're gonna go ahead and let that continue to drain. You could open it up a little bit more, but we're gonna go ahead and just leave it at that. Because, ask me how I know. If you, if you turn this too much, it's gonna pop out. And it's gonna be very difficult to get back in. Ask me how I know. I did this on my wife's 2016 Charger SRT 392. And let me tell you, it was a pain to get back in. So gently crack it open and it's gonna take a while, but it's worth it. So again, this is called your Peacock. It's a funny name, I know, but that's what it's called. So you just crack it loose and let it drain. And because we have the radiator cap off, it's gonna hopefully drain a lot faster so I will bring you back okay guys so it, it's finished draining out already so we're gonna tighten back up the peacock And remember, be gentle, because you don't want to break it. Okay, so now that it's tight, we're gonna go back up top and go ahead and start putting our water in. Okay guys, now we're gonna go ahead and start filling this up with some water. So I have this uh, pretty cool funnel system. It's a special tool for filling your coolant. You just find the attachment that fits in here for you and then the attachment that fits over similar to a radiator cap put that inside yeah, maybe okay and then I forgot to mention to do your flush you want to make sure to use distilled water don't use regular drinking water because it's got added minerals that could affect, interact negatively with your engine and your cooling system components. Um, uh, a garden hose with water from the tap machine or, or even tap water from your house, I guess would be 
Worst case scenario, if you can't get distilled water, but try your best to use some kind of distilled water. So we're gonna go ahead and just start filling this up. So as you can see, bubbles are coming up and it's sucking it down more in the system. I don't know if you guys could hear that, all those bubbles coming up. And you're gonna have air in your system. So what can help burp out that air is if you come over here to your radiator hose, your upper radiator hose, you can, you can squeeze it. And if you notice over here in the reservoir, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but it's bubbling up, pushing out that air. So we'll go ahead and continue to fill this up with distilled water, and then I'll bring you guys right back. Okay guys, so the water's completely to the top. So in order to have the coolant flowing through your heater core to do a complete coolant flush, you're gonna have to run the engine and turn your blower on high, and then you're gonna have to put the temperature to hot, as hot as uh, the temperature will go. That will have coolant flowing through your heater core in order to do a complete and thorough coolant flush, as well as it will get out any air in the system. It will help burp the air out of the system. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now, in some cases, here's your thermostat housing, uh, at least on my car, here's your thermostat housing. So on my thermostat, the gasket is a part of the thermostat. Now, if your system allows you to have a gasket on your thermostat housing, you can actually, to make the process go a lot faster, you can actually take out your thermostat to allow the coolant to flow through a lot faster. But in my case, if I was to do that, I'm gonna start getting water and coolant shooting out from the thermostat housing, which we don't want. So I'm gonna to have to leave my old thermostat in and allow the car to heat up to operating temperature so this, that it will allow this to open up and have coolant flowing through my system. So let's go ahead and start the car and turn the heater on. Okay guys, so we're in the vehicle now. We're gonna go ahead and start it up and turn the blower high and the temperature on high. Okay guys, so we got the temperature up, almost the operating temperature. The thermostat should have opened. We're gonna go ahead and shut it off. And now we're gonna let it cool down before we open up the system. Okay guys, so as we let the vehicle cool down so that we can open up the system again, this is the new coolant that is supposed to go in, that's gonna go in. Look at that. And this is what was in there that came out. 
That is a big difference, guys. Look at that. So even at 50,000 miles, it was it's still a good thing that I'm changing it. Okay, guys, so the vehicle's had time to cool off. Upper radiator hose is pretty cold. Engine's pretty cold. So now let's go ahead, take it off. Now let's drain it out, and we'll go under the vehicle now. Okay, guys, so now we're back under here. We're going to open up the petcock again. So is that drains? Is that finished drains? Draining will bring you right back. So it stopped flowing. So we're gonna go ahead, close her back up. Okay guys, so now let's go back up to the top. Okay guys, so now this is gonna be flush number two. So we're gonna go ahead and fill it up again. Okay, so that was about half a gallon. Now on the second flush is where I like to use the flush and cleaner because on our set on our first flush this is what we got out so there's still cooling in there because we had to get it access the heater ho uh, the heater core that was why we turned on the heater and ran the car so now we're gonna add our coolant flush in it. And it looks just like water. So you're going to add the whole bottle. Now we're going to keep going with our distilled water. You guys can see we're gonna go ahead and burp it a little bit with the upper radiator hose so burping it's gonna help get out the air out of the system and that, that's gonna allow it to suck more of the coolant or water in the system because right now some of that space inside the system is being taken up by air so you want to burp it all out and that looks like about all that's gonna come out. So now we're gonna go ahead, cap it off. We're gonna run the vehicle again, same thing. Have your blower set all the way to high and your heat set all the way to high, your temperature set all the way high. We're gonna run it. We're gonna allow the thermostat to open up, allow it to circulate through the heater core. That way you can uh, do a complete flush. We're gonna drain it and then we're gonna repeat the process as needed. So I'm not gonna take you guys through all that because it's the same thing each process, uh, but when it comes down to the end, I will bring you guys right back after we finish our coolant flush. And as soon as the coolant or coolant flush or the water comes out clear, you're good to go. So I will bring you guys right back. And we're back guys. So after five flushes, we're good to go. So now it's time, since the system is empty, no coolant, 
no water. We're gonna go ahead and tackle the thermostat housing. We're gonna take this off and then we're gonna put in the new thermostat. Now be careful because after you running the car constantly, it's gonna be pretty warm. So I'm wearing some gloves. So it's not gonna be as hot. It's gonna help protect me. So what you wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to take some pliers or channel locks to your hose clamp here. Press it in. And remove it off of your hose that's on to the thermostat housing. You got one bolt here, then I don't know if you guys can come over here on this side and see the bolt down here. Okay. Okay guys, so we're gonna go ahead and unbolt the thermostat housing. It takes a 13 millimeter socket. So let's let's get to it. Let's get to it. two hours later and what you guys could do or should do is probably get some napkins some paper towels and put around here because you might get a little bit of a leak Three hours later. Sorry, I keep sniffling, guys. Allergies are acting up today. Well, this one just doesn't want to come off. There we go. Bolt number two. So now we can come over here and pull thermostat housing off so we could just set this aside and can you guys see inside there so you want to take note of how it's setting in here if you notice there's a little I don't know if you I don't know if you guys can see that on camera it's like a little let me go ahead and pull this out to take some pliers or if you can't do it with pliers guys get a flathead screwdriver and pop it pop it out like that it's probably better probably easier if you do that so the orientation is just like this. There's a little little valve here or a little nipple here, whatever you want to call it. Here's the back side of it. So it's important to make sure that that is on top because what's going to happen is when pressure builds up and it needs to be released um, or if there's air in the system, it comes out through the top, you know, air travels to the highest point which in this case would be here so if you have this on bottom you're defeating the purpose of this little little valve here 
and it's not going to work properly. So make sure that you guys uh, realize the orientation of your thermostat and keep that up top. So this looks like it's in pretty good, pretty good shape, but we're going to go ahead and change it out just for some routine maintenance. So you want to take your other one and you want to make sure it's exactly the same which in our case it is. So if you look here on the old one, it says 203 degrees. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. Now, if you look on here on the new one, inside there, it says 203 degrees. So you always wanna make sure you replace the old thermostat with the new thermostat that is this rated at the same temperature because if you change the temperature of the thermostat in there it's going to change your entire system it's going to change how it operates and it can so if you don't replace it with the same degree thermostat that you originally had your vehicle can actually throw a check engine light and a diagnostic trouble code because the computer is not reading the right temperature that your vehicle is operating at so let's say if you went with the 180 degree thermostat, well now your thermostat's gonna open up a lot earlier. Your engine's never gonna be able to get to operating temperature or the operating temperature that it's been uh, set at through the computer and then it's gonna throw a check engine light. So make sure, make sure you replace it with the same one. So enough about that. Let's go ahead and put this bad boy back in. So again, it's at the top. And it just sets right in, just like that. Okay, guys, so we got it installed. I'm going to come back over here. Put our thermostat housing back on. Start screwing it in hand tight. Go down to the bottom. And you guys want this to go in pretty evenly, so make sure you're not just hammering down one side. You want to kind of make it even. And you're just gonna get a little just 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 snug just a little snug okay guys so we have our torque wrench here and the torque specs for these are set for 21 foot pounds so we're gonna go ahead put it at 21 foot pounds actually trick question there Actually, what you should do, since it's for 21 foot-pounds, 
you should actually go to roughly, let's say 15 foot pounds. Anytime you're doing gaskets, um, any, anything where you're mating two surfaces to seal, um, I personally like to go for this is 21 foot pounds. I want to go 15 on one side, 15 on the other, and then 21, 21. So let's do that now. Click. So now let's do the next one. So now we're going to go back, set it to 21 foot-pounds. Here we go. And this time we'll go to the bottom. Click. foot pounds okay guys so after you get your bolts torqued you want to come back over here take your clamp there we go walk it back on There you go. Put it back in the same place. Make sure your hose is on tight so you don't get no leaks. And then once we start the car, we're going to make sure that we're not getting any leaks from our hose, from our thermostat housing, and our pet cock. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and start putting in our coolant. So I got mine from the dealership, the Mopar. It's the 10 year antifreeze coolant and this is already the 50 50 premix so i don't have to add water so remember in my prior video i said mine takes 50 parts water to 50 parts coolant or 50 percent water 50 percent coolant so let's start adding it in So as you guys are adding this in, you can also come over here to your upper radiator hose and start burping out some of that air. And as you can see, the coolant level is already going down. So we keep adding more. Now we're getting close to the fill line. I'm gonna burp it just a little bit more. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and start the engine. Let's see if we can't get a little bit of more air out. Okay, we got the car running. We're gonna go ahead and burp it a little bit more. And see if it doesn't go down. Okay guys, so I turned the car off for the moment because I want to uh, explain something to you guys. So you're going to go ahead and run the car. You want, again, you want your 
heater on high, high blower, and high heat. That's going to cause um, your heater core to start the coolant to start flowing through the heater core. Now, a way to to know if you have air in your system or not is your heater is not going to be hot. And if that's the case, you're going to have to try to burp that air out more. So once you start getting a uh, once the heat once the heat starts getting hot from your vents, then you know you have no more heat in your in your system. I'm um, sorry, heat. Oh my God. So you won't have coolant. Wow. So you won't have air in your system. Sorry guys, it's been a long day. So we're gonna go ahead and put the cap on and let it, let it heat up. Okay guys, so after running the engine, the coolant went all the way up to the very top. So you just shut it off and then you just keep burping the system. As you can see, it's already starting to go down again. You can also, wiggle your lines a little and it will help burp that air out so I still have air in my system because after running the car I still had uh, not sufficient heat coming out of the vents so it's a matter of just getting the air out okay guys so after burping it I don't know if you guys can hear it But now our level's starting to drop. Look at how much it's dropping. So all that was air still in our system. So now we're gonna go ahead, top it off, and keep running it, and make sure we have high heat coming out of our vents. So we'll go ahead, put our funnel back in, take our coolant, we're almost home free guys, so go ahead. So now we'll go ahead and run the system one, hopefully one more time, and we'll bring it back. Okay guys, so the heater is pretty hot now, we got all the air out of the system, our coolant level is on point, our thermostat housing is not leaking, our hose is not leaking, and we checked underneath and our pet cock is not leaking. So we're all set. Okay guys, and there you have it. There is our complete coolant flush. So this is what it's supposed to look at, look like. And this is what, it, what we got out of it. Compare those two, wow, what a difference. So we have the first coolant flush compared to what come out. We have the second coolant flush, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. Look at that guys, almost clear, clean water. Look at that difference. So as you can see, we progressed. If we would have done one more, it might have come out completely clear, but that was good enough for me. So there you have it, guys. That is how to do a complete coolant flush in your car. So we went ahead and installed the new radiator cap. I didn't show that on there, but, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Okay, guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button below. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, go ahead and put them in the comment section below. And please subscribe to my channel. I'm working hard to show you guys how to do your own DIY projects on your car. And please subscribe. Okay, guys, make sure you hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when I put out a next video. So hope you guys like. And until next time, see ya.